oversees the Federal Aviation Administration, which is supposed to be the nation's aviation watchdog. One of the things that you have to do now if you're going to build a new airplane is you have to meet certain survivability levels and impact levels. Over the years, the FAA, NASA, and industry have studied passenger survivability based in part on drop tests, like this one conducted in 2000, when the FAA dropped a 737 aluminum fuselage with dummies connected to computers. This drop test was not part of any certification process. Rather, it was a study. From these kinds of tests, the industry learned how to make aluminum airplanes more survivable or crashworthy. You have to be able to have a crash worthy in a standard of 30 feet per second. And the metal planes, by and large, um, are supposed to meet that and do meet that. And you're supposed to be able to survive that kind of a plane crash. And that's very important because people do. But the verdict is out for some like Weldon on whether the 787 is as crashworthy as an aluminum plane. They're not doing anything close to the thoroughness of the drop test that they did in 2000. They're not doing that for the 787. Basically, I believe, because if you can't stand the answer, don't ask the question. But Boeing, which declined our repeated requests for an on-camera interview, wrote us that they were asking the question by doing tests to make sure the 787 has the same or better survivability as a similarly sized aluminum airplane. They say they have conducted simulations and actual drop tests of a portion of the 787 to prove the crashworthiness of this new passenger airliner. The company would not share the details of those tests with us, saying they were proprietary. Since Weldon felt Boeing wouldn't listen, he presented his concerns to the FAA, which was already experiencing a learning curve when it came to composites. The FAA has admitted recently, only within the last couple months, that there's a lot about composites that they don't understand. And if the FAA doesn't understand it, then neither does Boeing. The FAA proposed new guidelines designed to ensure that the 787 is as crashworthy and fire resistant as aluminum planes. Boeing says they will comply with the FAA's guidelines. Weldon is so worried that he wrote this letter to the FAA saying that the rules don't go far enough and that it will be very difficult for Boeing to make the 787 as crashworthy as an aluminum plane. Let's assume that we use some special devices that Boeing has been looking at to improve the crashworthiness of the current design. And what that is, is to put some what we call snubbers underneath the cargo floor. Now that will provide some limited amount of improved shock absorbing capability. It's relatively unproven, but it's a band-aid. It's nothing close to the potential of metal frames. Airbus, based in Europe, just announced that they will be manufacturing their answer to the Dreamliner, the Airbus A350, with a composite design for the fuselage. Airbus considered including an aluminum fuselage frame for the airplane, but not everyone was pleased with that. According to Schiavo, the airlines were not happy about the extra weight from the aluminum. Airlines complained to Airbus that they're adding weight and they want the lighter composites because it's cheaper. So it comes down to money and um, that in the airline world, that, uh, that's first. <laughs> that's on the list number one. Another cause for concern with composites, says Weldon, is fire. Let's talk about uh, combustibility, of uh, the fire danger. Yeah, well, let's compare it to aluminum. Aluminum reflects heat away. Now, you'll see many pictures of the aftermath of a crash with an aluminum airliner, and you'll see a lot of the hull isn't there anymore. You can see where it melted. But the people were long gone before that in general. It's going to be a much different situation with a composite airliner. If the bottom of the airplane is shattered due to the crash landing, there's an open hole for the fire to get directly into it. The smoke from burning composites fabricated out of graphite and epoxy is so toxic 
that the FAA has already effectively banned it inside airplanes currently in service. Although the exterior of the 787 is made from this type of composite, in an email, Boeing says that they do not have any indications of adverse toxicity associated with the use of composites on the new 787. And then there is the issue of lightning. Airliners are subject to lightning strike. And in fact, on average, they're hit one or two times a year. I've actually been on a severe lightning strike flight in which the passengers were screaming. And I, I was one of those who helped to calm them down because I said that, uh, you know, the, the airplanes are designed to disperse the electricity and don't worry about it, we're going to be fine. But composite materials, as engineers and aviation experts know, have a record of poor conductivity. They're plastic. And so there is nothing to direct the lightning around the wing, which is the fuel tank, or even the center fuel tank, rather than into it. And so the issue is, well, what are you going to do to direct the lightning around it rather than into the structure where it will cause a disaster? To deal with the lightning problem, Boeing is, among other things, embedding copper alloy mesh inside the airplane's surface to disperse lightning strikes. But copper alloy has problems of its own. Some engineers, like Welton, are concerned that the vast temperature difference on the ground and at high altitude will cause the metal mesh to expand and contract so much that it will damage the composite structure. Even more troublesome is a lightning strike potentially damaging a metal fastener in a vulnerable place like the wing, setting the stage for the fastener to fail. Boeing says it believes special coating on the fasteners will protect the airplane in a lightning strike. The FAA says that before the 787 will fly, Boeing needs to prove that the chance of lightning sparking a fuel tank explosion in flight is less than one in a billion. In a statement provided by Boeing, they say that with each new generation airplane, quote, we work diligently to ensure we create designs that enhance the safety of our products, end of quote. Composites are the future, says Rayco, and Boeing, he says, will eventually get it right, continuing, he believes, its remarkable safety record. I'm excited to ride on the 787 and I'm excited to fly in composite aircraft. You wouldn't have any personal concerns about walking aboard and flying transoceanic? Either. Not at all. The first 787s are scheduled to be delivered in May 2008 to Japan's all Nippon Airways. So if there are issues with the composite design, as Weldon and others insist, it seems late for the FAA to be discovering them. When the FAA does something like this, it's usually because somebody's complained, and it's usually to cover their, their cover themselves. Um, and that's not bad. If the FAA has been made aware of a situation and now they're going to step in and require something, good. They should. But aviation expert Chiavo says the FAA doesn't often challenge the powerful aviation giant. That may be due in part to the revolving door that swings between the FAA and Boeing. The revolving door between the FAA and Boeing is in good health. There is no permanent restriction on moving between the industry and the FAA for employment. And it is not unusual at all to see someone either take an early retirement or simply leave the FAA and go to work in the industry that they used to regulate. In November, outgoing FAA chief Marion Blakey will become the top lobbyist for the Aerospace Industries Association whose biggest member is Boeing. Moreover, the two top FAA officials in charge of certifying the 787 have ties to Boeing. Ali Barami worked for McDonnell Douglas, an aircraft manufacturer that merged with Boeing in 1997, and John Hickey worked for Boeing before joining the FAA in 1990. The FAA declined to do an on-camera interview with us, saying that if the 787's new technology doesn't meet the safety standards already established, then the plane won't fly. As for Weldon, he says at the time of his complaints, Boeing assigned a special investigator to the case. Do we know what it finally concluded? Well, I was told what the findings were. They made that assumption that crashworthiness is material independent, which is patently absurd. The ethics investigators transferred the complaint to a technical review committee, says Weldon. I found out by late 
in 2005 that nothing had changed. In fact, 